Sorry, let's one more. Sorry, I just showed you. My Jesus said, I showed you many verses. My friend, that he excuse is me. The same no, with the what you have shown is this Jesus says, My father has given me this, my father is greater than all, and I am the father one. Then I showed you the context because you did not read the context. The context in few chapters later, Jesus says, I pray that you, my disciples, will also be one with us. Just as I am the Father one, you will be one with us. So you... Make sense, you are listen, listen. Because you are clearly seeing the context where Jesus says, just as I am the Father the one, you, the disciples, will be one, but you reject it because it goes against your belief. Try to be consistent. You are I showed you the context. No, we showed you many verses, and you none of them, none of them, well, you have demonstrated. The have convinced me. I can say no, no, no. Look, look. Even if evidence is given to John you and you don't accept 10. it, how can you John be convinced? Chapter 10, John Simple. chapter 10. John chapter 10. Yeah. We're starting from verse 30, and we read uh, to verse 33. Yeah. From start from verse 30. Jesus says, I am God, right there? Does he? Let's, let's, let's read. Okay. If it says there, I, I have no problem. But does I it say that? And the we read to verse 33. One. Yeah. I and the Father are one. That's what we tackled already. Okay, okay, let's go. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do stone me? We are not stoning you for any of this, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. You know? What? It, it, just to interpret the text, you know? It, uh, hold on to that, it, hold on, it's very important. It, it, so, so, do you do, take do, do the accusations... The I do, do know the passage very well. Do you know the passage. Do you accept the accusation of people as an evidence? If I accuse you of being a terrorist, is that an evidence that you are a terrorist? No, but... Uh, wait but a second, wait a second, please. I will deal with it fully, God willing. If I accuse you of a terrorist, is this an evidence of you being a terrorist? No, no, no. Right. Yes. So an accusation is not an evidence. Yeah? So did Jesus say, I am blaspheming? Or was the Jewish people said that you are claiming to be God? Who is claiming? Who is accusing? It's a Jewish. Right. So they're accusing him. So we establish one thing. They're accusing of blasphemy when he didn't, right? So it doesn't, even if they accused him you're God, it doesn't make Jesus to be God in any way that he's claiming to be God. Simple accusation. Now, did Jesus respond to this accusation? Read on. He responded to them and he refuted them. He refuted them. No, one second, one second. I have another one, but. No, no. Read the same one. What is the response of Jesus in this accusation? How did he respond to it? Read it aloud, because the answer is there. No, let, let me read. So what happened? Jesus says, look, Jesus answered them. Is it not written yeah, in your law? I have said you are gods. We have already covered that. It, this is in Psalms 82.6. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, yeah, and the scripture cannot be broken, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Into the world why? then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said now what did he say now he's answering what he said I said I am God because I said did he say that no I am God's son I am Ben Elion do not believe me unless I do what my father does but if I do it even though you do not believe me believe the miracles that you may know and understand the father is in me and I in the father again they uh, tried to seize him, but they escaped their grasp. Let's understand what the response was. Jesus didn't say, of course I'm God. That's not a blasphemy. Because I'm God, I have to tell you that I'm God. He said nothing like that. He says, look, hold on. He said, isn't it written in your law that I said you are gods and the scripture cannot be broken? 
So when we go in Psalms 82, this is what God, Jesus is referring to. God says, he presides in the assembly of gods. And he says, I said, you are gods, sons of the most high. But then he continues, but you will die like men. So Jesus tells them, in the old times, God has called human beings Elohim or gods. And those human beings who were called Elohim, imagine I'm one of them. And I come to you, I'm Elohim. I'm not blaspheming because God calls me Elohim. It doesn't make me God. And I'm saying, I'm Ben Elion. I'm the son of the Most High. I'm not blaspheming because God called me that. And neither am I blaspheming because it makes me God in any way. So Jesus told them, look, even in your book, human beings were called by God as Elohim, son of Elohim. It doesn't make them God or son of God. I only said I am Ben Elion, son of God. <laughs> this term doesn't mean I'm God because Jesus throughout the New Testament makes it clear that you are son of God. You are son of God. Adam is the son of God. Anyone who's a righteous person is the son of God. So Jesus refuted their accusation from this blasphemy. So again, any verse that you bring, it goes against your belief that Jesus claims to be God or claims to be claiming to be uh, one receiving worship. Every single one we have discussed, it goes against your belief. No, no. Do you believe in what the Bible says? Okay. The Bible says Jesus has a God. Do you believe that? Jesus is the God himself. No. The Bible says Jesus says, I am going to my father and your father. So is his father different than your father? He no, says clearly, no. So, so you. I have another father. But when he says, I, but, 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 but what you, father. but what you don't understand, what Jesus says is this. Jesus says, I am going to my father and your father. So he's already teaching you, his father is your father too. So just like he's the son of God, you're the son of God too. No, I'm not the son. He told you that clearly, and he didn't stop there. He says, I am going to my God, and your God. So his God is your God too. And your God is his God too. God. It's the same God. So we have now demonstrated to you as a Christian in your Bible, Jesus says that he has a God that he's going to. God does not have a God, my friend. God does not have a God that he's going to. God is God. God doesn't go to another God. If Jesus says, I have a God that I'm going to, he cannot be God. Simple, plain. So you now have Jesus clearly telling you that he has a God did he worship him properly? He says, yeah, whatever my father tells me, I obey him because he's greater than me. And my, did he not say that? My father has given this all to me. So he was a humble servant of God, a humble, sincere worshiper of God. That's what Islam teaches. He was a messenger and a prophet of God, very humble, very sincere and a good worshiper of God. That's why a Muslim can never be a Muslim unless they believe Jesus was a messenger of God. So we invite you to the same message of Islam. Come back to the worship of the God of Jesus, the God of Moses, the God of Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Because in that will be your success, worshiping God alone. But what's the difference between Muhammad and Jesus Christ? Muhammad was the last prophet and Jesus wasn't the last prophet. Muhammad is in Mecca, Jesus Christ is in heaven. No, Jesus Christ yes, my will come down again, he will die, he will die. So when he comes down and dies, are you going to worship a dead man? Of course not. You're not going to worship any man. You're going to worship, you're going to worship the one who sends him, right? No. So who, okay, one simple question. Who sent Jesus? Himself? <laughs> who sent him? Himself? God sir. No, who sent him? Himself? God. No, answer the question. Did Jesus send himself? The answer is not himself. He says, he sent me. He you should worship. O oh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Whose will be done? Thy will be done in the name of In the name of No, no, no. Okay, whose will should be done? Jesus' will or the one in heaven? Say, but... That Jesus Christ, how he told us to pray, to pray in the name of the Lord. Okay, who should you pray to? To the Father. Right. Do you heaven. should you pray to the Son? In the to the Father. That's clear. That's clear. Yes. Should I, you pray to the Son? I got this. 
I got this. Good. To the Father. Next question. In should you name, pray to the Son? In the name of who? No. Next question is, should you pray to the Son? I pray to the Father, yeah? Okay. And and the Son or only the Father? Okay, I got this. No. I pray to I God. want to understand whether you're a pure monotheist or you are an associator with God. Do you also pray to the Son? Or only to the Father. If you do only to the Father, then I agree with you. You should only pray to the Father because He is the only God. Hallowed be thy name in the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, it doesn't say that. Carry on, carry on. Read it. Read it. Read it. We have a verse. Interesting. Interesting verse. Let's see. We have a verse. Okay. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. And there were loud so, voices in the in revelation. Heaven. We have seven trumpets, yeah. Which uh, and this is a dream, right? When it's a dream. Have... Oh, come on. Wait, wait. Now. Revelation is about dreams of dragons and. Oh, come on now. Okay, okay. No. Okay, carry on, okay, carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on. Carry on. Take, carry on. Let's see. Okay. No, no, no. First, need to explain if it's a dream or not. Go ahead. We, we need the Revelation one, verse. Blessed, yeah, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, okay. blessed are those. Who read, read the and words understand. Yeah, the so prophecy. revelation is and not a dream. Revelation is a fact. And and the, it's a okay. The so kingdom the of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever. Thank you very much. In Revelation, does it talk about heaven? Yes. Right. How many throne is in heaven? Throne. Throne. You know, kings and queens have thrones. They sit on. Yes. How many thrones in heaven? Okay, God in Revelation is sitting on the throne and someone standing on his right hand side. Who is the one standing on the right hand side? Every chapter, the chapter 12. One second. Every chapter 12. Now let's talk about Revelation, not Hebrews. Every chapter 12 is speaking about where is the throne. So here is the here is the sanctuary. Okay. Where is speaking about the in Revelation? Speaking about the sanctuary and in, the heavenly throne. In Revelation, in, in Revelation, throne. you have God on the throne, right? Revelation chapter six. One second. We have we have all the all the all the answer for it. Oh, very good. If you do. So, let's see the picture in Revelation. Who is God on the throne and who is standing on his right hand side? Let's read the Hebrew first until I find the, the verse in Revelation because I have a verse in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Așa, capitolul 1, spune aici că Dumnezeu s-a așezat la... Și aici, 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 aici. Ok, Hebrew 12. Yeah. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders... Uh, yeah, the point of what we are saying is this. Would you have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in his sanctuary the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. So the thing is, what we are interested for us, what we, what, what we need from uh, from this chapter is verse one and two, mm -hmm. which it's explained Jesus is uh, uh, raising up in the heaven and he sit next to God Father. He's, he's, he's sitting or standing? Standing. Standing. Yeah, right. Why is he not sitting if he's equal to God? So you have God on your throne and someone standing on the right hand side. Sit down sit at down. the right hand of the throne. So good, good, good. Sit down. down so you have one person on the throne and the right hand side, someone sitting down. So how many gods are sitting down on the throne? One or two? If you believe in one God, now you have two persons sitting, right? Either you believe in one God 
or you believe in more than one God. You can't have it both ways. So we have two thrones in there. So how many gods are sitting on the throne? God, Father, God, Son. Are you saying one God sits on through two thrones? No, they are manifesting in one. We believe. No, that's not manifesting in one. We, are we believe God is manifesting in three different persons: no, no. God, Father, God, Son, Listen. and God, Holy Spirit. You have, have two thrones. Three different missions. Please, they please, please, three please. Different missions Don't talk about your belief. They are manifesting one. When we're speaking about you God, know, we, we are speaking about one God. You're, you're talking about your belief, which is needs to be, which needs to be based on the text. So you have in heaven two thrones. Yes. Is one God sitting on the two thrones in your belief? Or no. two gods sitting on the two thrones? Two gods. Two gods. So how many gods do God you believe Father, in? God Father, God Son. How many gods do you believe in? One God or we, two gods? We believe in this term which means which are Trinity. That means, do you understand the, the term? So where is the, where is the throne for the Holy, Holy Spirit? Can you show me a throne for the Holy Spirit? We don't have the we don't have a throne for the Why not? Holy Spirit. Why not? Holy is he not God according to you? No, the, the Holy Spirit is doing another. He have he is having another mission. He is doing something else. And we, we read this in John. No, no, in in heaven, in heaven, in heaven, you have no throne for the Holy Spirit. John chapter. We can read about the Holy uh, the Holy Spirit as well. In John chapter fourteen. Hi, John. John. John five. I speak in John five about Holy Spirit. We read about the Holy Spirit. John chapter fourteen. Sorry for my language. No, no, you're very it's clear. Not the, it's not the, no the problem. Language. I can understand you. John chapter. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Let's read a few verses before. It's an interesting chapter, interesting verse, right? Very interesting. Did he not say to people, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But it's necessary on me that I go. If I don't go, he will not come. But when I go, I will send him. So my first question, did Jesus complete his mission and tell them everything they needed to know? Yes. Answer is no. Because he says, because he says, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear it. So I'm going to let the person I'm going to send later to complete the mission. Which was Jesus' mission? My, my, please, please, let's understand this point. Is, did Jesus tell everything there was to know to the people then? The answer according to Jesus is no. He says to his disciples, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear it. You're not ready for it. But when I go, Are you ready for Jesus Christ? please, you're not preaching mode. Let's deal with the subject at hand. So Jesus says, Are you ready to accept Jesus Christ? Look, 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 look. Are you ready for God because you worship other than him? Are you ready for his wrath because you worship other than him? See how it feels? God doesn't so, mean wrath. God, God, God will have vengeance, according to your Bible, on those who worship other than him. Vengeance. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know why? Because they disbelieved his law. He can For destroy... God so loved the world, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's not loving. Do you know why? Why? Let me tell you why. Then we'll come back to this. Remind me this question about this. Uh, um, I have many things to tell you about the Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, yeah, now, I'll Answer tell you. This. I am telling you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you can have everlasting life, right? Do you know why this demonstrates that God is not loving? Let me tell you. Imagine father and son, right? He says, I love so much this world. I'm going to send my son to be killed and tortured. Does the father love the son more or the world more? Question number one. Secondly, if he so loves the world more than the son, which is obvious, I didn't have to ask that question, why didn't he come down himself and die? 
Instead, he sent his son. Look, if I have a son, let me let me tell you. Don't just do this. Think. If I have.